but here's my news, and it comes from Statistics Canada itself. Look at this. Record population growth during the third quarter of 2019. Let me read. Canada's population increased by 208,234 from July 1st to October 1st, 2019, driven mainly by an influx of immigrants and non-permanent residents. This was the first time that Canada's population increased by more than 200,000 in a single quarter. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 208,234 people in a quarter, like a, like a quarter of a year in, in 90 days? But I showed you, Trudeau promised that we would have only 340,000 new immigrants, give or take, in a whole year. Let me read some more. This is Statistics Canada. This gain represents a quarterly population increase of 0.6%, the largest growth observed since the beginning of the period covered by the current demographic accounting system, July 1971. On October 1st, 2019, Canada's population was estimated at 37,797,496. International migration, both permanent and temporary, accounted for 83.4% of the total Canadian population growth in the third quarter, a share that continues to increase the rest of the gain, 16.6% was a result of natural increase or the difference between the number of births and deaths. So out of 208,234 population growth, you heard them, 83.4% was from immigration, the rest was you know, people having babies. So let's count immigration only, let's get rid of the natural uh, population growth from childbirth. So there were 173,667 immigrants in 90 days. Extrapolate that to 694,000 on an annual basis. 694,000, that's almost exactly double what Trudeau promised. It's, it's, it is exactly double what he promised. Here's the trick. When Trudeau said 340,000 people, he meant immigrants as a particular legal definition, not the plain meaning, someone who has moved here from somewhere else. That's what you and I might think immigration means, 340,000 people means. But there's another category, non-permanent residents. I, I, I don't even like to say those words because, of course, in Canada, almost no one is ever deported. No one leaves. We've had 50,000 people simply waltz across the border at Roxham Road um, and what, uh, maybe one or two percent of them even being deported? Look, the RCMP are carrying their bags for them, helping them out. So calling these people non-permanent residents is, uh, I, I think that's a lie. A bunch of young men coming in. Um, let me read a little bit more. The strong international migratory increase observed during the third quarter was led by both the arrival of many new immigrants, 103,751 persons, and an increase in the number of non-permanent residents, 82,438 persons. Growths of this magnitude had never before been seen in a single quarter. Well, does it matter what the classification of these migrants is, immigrant, Permanent resident, non-permanent resident, criminal fake refugee just waltzing across the border and laughing at our cops. It doesn't matter practically. They will all send their kids to school. They will all go to the same hospital emergency room as you and wait in line. They will all sit in traffic. They all need housing. Those that do work, if they do work, will drive down labor prices, you know, supply and demand, especially if they're unskilled. Hey, why is traffic so bad in so many of our cities? Why, why is it a six, seven, eight hour wait in the emergency room? Why are food banks and homeless shelters so full? Hey, why is it hard to get an entry level job in Canada that pays well? Hey, how come housing costs so much? Well, look at this. Here's also from Statistics Canada. It's the number of houses in the country that are under construction. Um, and here's the number, uh, it's the number under construction, uh, houses of all kinds, single family homes, apartments, everything. So in that same third quarter of 2019, uh, the number of houses under construction, um, when there's 208,000 more people coming in, 
there were 51,865 new homes being built. Now, look, if you're in the construction business, this is great having 200,000 people a quarter move in. Uh, housing construction doesn't seem to be keeping up, in fact. It sounds like a boom. Maybe that's one of the reasons supply and demand while housing is so expensive. You're building 50,000 new houses. You're bringing in 200,000 new people. Um, look, if, if you're in the construction business, this is great. If you're in the real estate business, if you're a landlord, it's great. If you're in the low-skill retail business, as in if you're an owner, like let's say you own a Tim Hortons, this is great. I mean, cheap labor, just happy to be here, happy to be earning $14 an hour instead of what, $4 an hour back home where they came from. But if you're not a landlord or a cheap employer, if you're just a regular Canadian, we're born and raised here, your family paid taxes to build this country, schools and hospitals over the decades, and now you can't find a job that pays enough to let you leave home, leave your parents home, let you buy your own home, start a family. If you can't afford to buy a house in Toronto or Vancouver, if you can't find a job in Calgary, Edmonton, if you can't get your kids into a university, if you can't see a doctor when you need one, well, maybe 208,000 new people in 90 days isn't that great. But hey, they all vote liberal, so there's that. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.